Hi, this is Andrew Park, and this video is about echo chamber advocacy. Most LGBTI advocates already engage in echo chamber advocacy, so this is nothing new, but it's important because data is perfectly suited for this advocacy kind of tactic. Echo chamber advocacy is where you identify or create an echo chamber where you can seek to have other people in that system or that echo chamber take on your issues and repeat your advocacy messages again and again. The echo chamber might be an institution, a large one like a World Bank or a government. It might be a conference uh, where you want everybody coming out of the conference to be repeating the same thing. Uh, it might be a network within the community. But the goal is to have your message uh, reduced to something that other people can use and then to see them use it so that your advocacy target, which may be the director of a program, it may be a legislature, your, your advocacy target hears your message from you as well as a whole bunch of other people. And so they perceive this message to have more weight because it's being repeated by many other uh, uh, perspectives and people in the system besides just you, the lone advocate. Uh, echo chamber advocacy is particularly useful when you have low resources and you really need other people to be able to help you do your work and achieve your goals. Now, in order to be able to engage in echo chamber advocacy, you need to have a few things happen. First, you need a message that can be very simple and reduced to an easy to communicate and easy to repeat phrase or sentence or idea. Uh, it's also got to stay the same. So if your message changes, you really can't expect everybody else to keep up with your changes. So you've got to uh, maintain a consistency in your message. Uh, it's got to be objective and, and independent. If you want people to repeat your message, uh, you really can't expect them to repeat a message that is attached to your political preferences and advocacy priorities if they have different political perspectives and advocacy priorities. But if the message feels independent, uh, unattached to those kinds of priorities, it's something that everybody else can say and adopt as a statement of the truth. So you want to have it f have that uh, independent feel to it. You also want it to be phrased in a way that's uh, that's uh, uh, not related to the particular type of messenger. So it's not a message about, we think this. It's a message about, uh, here is uh, what the reality is. So is it repeatable by other people? Now, uh, I'm of course not saying that the messenger doesn't matter, but for echo chamber advocacy for that tactic, you need a message where the messenger actually does not matter because you want anybody to be able to say it. So here are a few kinds of messages that began by someone sitting down saying, okay, here's something that I believe will help my advocacy and I want everybody else to believe this too and to repeat this. So we've seen many of these. The life expectancy of a trans woman is 35. Uh, women make such and such uh, sense to every dollar made by a male. A voter fraud is widespread in the United States. Wearing a mask helps uh, combat COVID. One third of homeless youth are LGBTI. These all began as advocacy messages to try to change people's minds, behaviors, positions, whatever. Uh, some of them don't have data to back them up, but nevertheless, you'll see these kinds of messages echoing around. So what you want to be able to do is to be able to convert your advocacy message to something that can be found uh, and repeated by all kinds of people that you work with.